Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today I am going to be creating a mimic with this wooden box. A mimic is often seen in D&D but also in card games and other board games. They have teeth, a tongue and eyes and the rest of it is that it could be in the shape of anything. So a chair, a chest, a book. Uh, Caitlin McCake has made mimic pins. So um, if, if you don't know, check out her um, her shop in the description box below. Uh, she has some awesome mimic pins. I think they're art supply pins. Without further ado, let's just get started. I have this wooden box as a base. You can basically get them anywhere, but if I can get this one on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description box below. I have some Sculpey Big End Bond or Liquid Sculpey some cast clay for the tongue so it's flexible and it doesn't break when it sticks out of the box this is super cheap clay well not super cheap but it's cheaper clay from montmart i think and i bought it ages ago and i don't use it for sculptures but because i want to make this a very exaggerated wood grain and uh, details as well on the chest I want to use this. It's just a flat surface and I thought it would, would be good for this purpose. And then of course all the clay tools that I might need. So um, let's get set up and let's get started. What I like to do before I start working with polymer clay is clean my work surface. So yes, this is clean and I clean it with isopropyl alcohol and that's just to get rid of any bits and pieces stuck on my mat and fluff and hair and whatnot. I don't have any pets but you know just in case and now i'm just gonna condition the clay and once i'm done with that i'm going to start the project okay all the clay is conditioned this is the third setting and this is the seventh setting so this is a bit thicker than this one and this is uh, the cost clay so this is just kneadable by hand it's very soft because it's the soft variety of the cost clay this needed a bit more conditioning through the pasta maker but it's all done now and next up is taking all the hardware off the mimic box now that we have these two pieces are ready to be worked on i am going to overlay the entire thing with the thin sheet of polymer clay and i'm going to attach that with the liquid sculpey so i'm just gonna put it on and brush it out and then attach the thin layer of polymer clay and then basically add the texture of planks and this brush is a brush that i only use for liquid sculpey and i just have that in my toolbox So because this clay is kind of sticky, it will stick to itself. Now that this is all covered on the outside, it's a bit hard to hold. You can see that I added some texture to the box already. So what I've done, I made a, some marks like that. They don't have to be even with these ones because it's wood. Then with the other side, I round the corners. This is, by the way, a dental explorer too, so it's it's nothing special, you can get them anywhere. And then I'll go over and draw lines like that. And just reinstating those lines again. And wherever you're not happy with the texture, you just go over again. Make some deeper marks. It is wood after all. What you can also do is add, like there are 
nails in there. So I'm just gonna go all around the box and add this texture until I'm happy with it. And then after this, I'm gonna bake it. And then I'm going to add all the details like the corners and the rivets and all that kind of stuff. This whole thing is baked now. And the other part, the top part is in the oven. And I'm adding these corners to all the sides to make it look more like a chest. And I'm indenting it with a ball stylus to give it that hammered metal look. And I also want to add some rivets. Basically means I roll a little ball of clay and I put it on. And there we have one rivet. And once that is baked, obviously it's all a lot more clear what it every what everything is. Make that a hammered look as well. Add a few more and then uh, it's starting to look like a chest. All right, if you're hearing some noises in the background, that is because I have a fan on, our aircon is broken, and it was 37 degrees Celsius today. So, finish the box. Well, not quite, obviously. I finished the exterior, so I did the wood. I did the metal parts all around as well. I added that to all the frames. Then with a hand screwdriver, I drilled a hole like that goes into the wood and I just stuck this piece of metal in. This is where the tongue will be. And then on the inside, I added the chain because this will be heavy. So when, with that chain, it will stand up. And if I need to shorten that because of top heavy, because I'm going to add more clay, because it's going to be top heavy, I can shorten it as I, as I go kind of thing. And then at the back, I added one of those hinges because the other one broke. So that is back on and um, that's that so far. I'm pretty happy with what it's looking like. Um, I am going to add the teeth top and bottom of the box and I might just put it in the oven like this because I want this to be a usual, usable box. So it's probably going to live on my husband's desk. But yeah, I want this to be a usable box. So hence the chain and hence me closing it and then building up on that. So let's um, build the face and some teeth, I suppose. So if this is where the tongue is gonna be, I might just keep that close with a rubber band. This is a permanent marker. I can just, you know, I need to paint it over anyway. I kind of need to have the teeth coming from underneath here. I don't want to make them too, too, too sharp. So what I might do, I might build this up with some tin foil and then build up the jaw from there. So that jaw should be sitting somewhere here. I'm probably gonna play some music whilst I do this. Pretty straightforward, because it's just a, um, a piece of polymer clay, really. So I sculpted out the um, main parts of the mouth and then I put liquid sculpey underneath and baked that for about 15 minutes. And now it's attached to the box and now I can add polymer clay. I rolled this out on the thickest setting on the pasta machine and now I'm going to attach it to the mouth with bake and bond or liquid sculpey. And my liquid sculpey was nearly finished so I put it in a little tub or container because I want to use every single drop of it. I'm just giving it a bit more of an upper lip, a bit more to push those teeth into if I'm going to make the teeth separate because I'm, I'm not sure yet. Just so gonna cover the bottom one. Again, I might just use that rubber band again. Just at the back there. It's enough to hold it closed. It's going to do the same thing with the lower lip.
So this whole time I was recording without my microphone on. Good job. And as you saw me create the tongue, I am going to dot it with the with a dotting tool. And I'm really happy with what this texture is looking like. Then I think I'm going to bake the whole thing. I might add some texture to the to the skin first and perhaps the eyes as well. And then I will bake it before I add the teeth. I'm just creating some small balls, which I'm pressing on top of the box. And those will be the eyes. I was texturing the, uh, the skin of the, the actual mimic with the rock. I'm not sure if I like it. Might have to come up with something else for that. How many eyes should the thing have? I have no clue. So now I'm wondering if I should make new teeth or go with the old ones in there. I could actually do that. Oops. So that's what they look like. And they're already in translucent, sculpy and, um, and baked as well. With various sizes so that I think I'm, I might just go with that. So I'll still put eyelids on the eyes, but for this, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of clay, make like a cylinder kind of shape, put it on here, smooth it out. Let's make room for a tooth, grab one of the teeth, put some liquid sculpey, and push that into here. And then I can, I think it's even a little bit high, this one. Ooh. Just use a little bit less clay. And there we have one tooth. And now I can make a little indent like so. I'm just gonna make a whole row like that. And then create all those. So a little bit of progress. This is what this face his face, his beak, looks like right now. This is where it opens and I am really happy with it so far. I like his uh, gums and his teeth and that you can still see the, the wood of the chest. And I'm now gonna progress to his eyes, give him some eyelids and um, give him some lower teeth as well. So for his eyelids, just need a little snake of clay. At the base. And then another snake of clay at the top. And then shape that into place. And there we have it, one eyeball. I just pushed in with ball stylus on both sides. And then smooth it out a little bit, going either way, and shaping the eyeball. So there we have one eyeball with an eyelid, so I'm gonna do the rest as well. All right, we have a chomper. <laughs> it is all baked and it's all put together. I could probably put this jaw a bit lower so the teeth would have been lower here. It's in hindsight. Maybe next time if I ever make another one. Um, but I kind of like how what he looks like uh, right now. So I did add a chain and it's attached with two little eyelets that with um, with like a screw bit that you can just screw into the wood. And the tongue is made out of cos clay so that won't break easily. It's less prone to baking. The teeth are made with translucent sculpey in a previous video and I had these left over and then this is all made with the Montmartre clay. And I, I have to say that I am actually pretty happy with how this clay behaved. It was a bit less easy to, um, to blend them together if you have two, two separate parts to blend that together. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with this clay, to be honest. It's a little bit drier in Australia right now, and maybe it won't 
work as well in winter because it's more humid because um, the clay is normally pretty sticky. I think we should um, paint this guy. I am thinking green, no not green, orange eyes, a purple going into red tongue and maybe these little moles might be green something like that and the rest kind of brownish so uh let's paint this guy up uh, i've got all the paints ready and i think we should just start this is a brown that i still have left over from Dumbledore's office there's nothing wrong with it and it's a nice shade of brown and i'm going to use that for the base of the box let's just get started shall we well it turns out that this paint is really rather sticky so I am gonna go over with this black paint by Apple Barrel and hopefully it won't be as sticky because this is not good. I'll do that and then I'll be back and then, <laughs> and then I'll just continue from there onwards. Okay that brown paint is a little bit of a disaster so I won't be using that for these kind of purposes anymore. Anyway we have a, uh, a black box now uh, with white eyes. I covered the clay with white paint, just folk art acrylic paint. And it's all nice and matte now, it's not sticky. So uh, I'm just gonna add detailing now and I, uh, I hope you enjoy some music whilst I do that.
And this is it for the final mimic. I really enjoyed working with polymer clay again. It seems like forever ago. For the final glossy layers, I've used Glossy Accents by Ranger. I will list all the materials and all my other social media in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.